Good morning, my friends. Welcome to this, uh, the first of our Lenten devotions, talking about hope, especially the hope that uh, that comes to us because of Easter. For this Lenten season, as I mentioned in our previous video, we're going to be talking about hope, um, because that's what Easter brings. We're going to look at Easter, we're going to look at the hope that brings, what that brings for us, and how that lives itself out, and what implications that has for our life in this world. I want to start today in maybe a strange place, just kind of laying a foundation here at first, uh, about Easter itself. If you've been paying attention to our readings on Sunday, you, you may have noticed that our gospel lessons are coming mostly from the Gospel of Mark. This year we're looking through Mark's gospel. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, Mark's gospel has an interesting juxtaposition when it talks about Easter. So if you go to the end of Mark's gospel, chapter 16 talks about the resurrection. Um, and you, if you remember the Easter story, the, the women go to the tomb early in the morning to finish the burial preparations on Jesus' body. They get to the tomb, wondering all the way how they're going to get the tomb open because there's a big rock in front. When they get there, they find the, the, the stone is already rolled away. The tomb is open. And they go in and they find not Jesus, but an angel who tells them that Jesus is not there. He is risen, the angel says. And the angel tells him to go and tell his friends that he's alive. The very last verse of Mark's gospel, at least what we believe the original Mark's gospel, there's some verses later that were probably added, added on at some point later. But the last verse, verse 8, in the New International Version says, Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Uh, the New Revised Standard Version says something very similar. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. That's always struck me as a strange way to to talk about Easter, trembling, bewildered, afraid. Uh, terror had seized them, amazement. I went back and did a little looking, uh, and, and the words in Greek are where we get the words for tremors, that they were, they were trembling. What do you do when you get excited? You kind of start getting shaky, uh, amazed. It actually is the word where we get the English word ecstasy. They were amazed. They were overwhelmed. They Emotions filled them to a point where they couldn't express them anymore. You ever had that kind of experience? You're so excited, so overwhelmed that you literally are shaking and your mind can't comprehend what you've just seen. And then they left because they were afraid. Ephabunto, phobia, is where we get the English word phobia. They were afraid. What's interesting about that and what's, what's so strange about that is not just that they were trembling and bewildered and, and afraid. You go to the beginning of Mark's Gospel, the very first verse of Mark's Gospel. And Mark begins his account of Jesus' life by saying, The beginning of the Gospel, the beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If Mark's telling us about good news and he ends his book with people trembling, amazed, and afraid, what gives? Here's what I think is going on. When the women showed up at the tomb that day, their world changed. When they showed up at the tomb that day, everything that they expected, not just about what they would find that morning, but everything that they expected about the world and their life in it was different. We expect that death is the end. Yeah, we talk about you know life in heaven with God, but there's a physical end to our existence at death. Not at Easter. Jesus' resurrection shows us that there's more to our physical lives than what ends at death when we put a body in a grave. That changed things for them. 
and when they realized that Jesus wasn't there, when the angel is talking to them, it, it, it made them wonder again and maybe finally put an exclamation mark on the question, you know, who is Jesus? Maybe he really is God's son. Maybe he really is who he has talked about being all along. Not just a good rabbi, not just a, a teacher, not just a healer, but truly God in the flesh. Everything is different. They come to understand who Jesus is. They come to understand that death is, is not permanent, that our, our physical nature, our physical selves are going to continue. And because of that, lots of other things have changed too. We're going to talk about some of those changes and some of those differences as we work our way through this, um, we work our way through the implications of this. But it's no wonder that these women were uh, amazed and trembling Everything is different. Everything is changed. And with that change brings a hope that they had never experienced before. Hope for their lives. Hope for, frankly, the world. Hope that this they were going to continue to have this relationship with their God, who they had been with all the time, whether they realized it or not. That they had been in the presence of their God as they talked, as they spoke, as they ate with Jesus, and that they were going to continue to have that relationship with him for the foreseeable future and really for eternity. I wonder why they were afraid. That may have been simply because who's going to believe it? Who's going to believe that many of the things that we think we know about this world aren't actually so? Um, they left... Word got around, and those other Gospels tell us about that. The point I want to leave you with here today is that Easter is indeed good news. But it's good news that is overwhelming to our human way of thinking and that challenges us to change how we understand almost everything about ourselves. And that's for those of us who have been in the church our whole lives and those who have never heard the gospel before at all. It changes everything about how we think. Again, we'll look at that over the next few weeks. Take some time and look through Mark's gospel. Read, the, read that verse, chapter 16, verse 8, in some different translations. You'll get a sense of what's going on. Uh, you'll get a sense of the amazement, the excitement, the, uh, the amazement, the, just the overwhelming nature of what Easter is, and then we'll talk about what that means for us in the future. God be with you. Thanks for joining me today. We'll talk again soon.